Hello friends, welcome to this session on Let's Tut. Today we are going to do quick revision of polynomials. Friends, this chapter comes under the section algebra which has a weightage of around 5 to 6 marks in the CBSC exams. So by now we should be knowing the meaning of polynomials which is many terms. Polynomial is an algebraic expression with power as whole numbers. There are different types of polynomials based on their powers such as constant, linear, quadratic, cubic, etc. A polynomial of a degree 0 is called as a constant polynomial and it is in the form of p of x is equal to k. Whereas polynomial of degree 1 is called as linear polynomial. It is in the form of p of x is equal to a x raised to 1 plus b where a and b will be real numbers and a n will never be equal to 0. Similarly, quadratic and cubic polynomials are the polynomials of degree 2 and 3 respectively, where quadratic polynomials have the general form p of x is equal to a x square plus b x plus c and cubic polynomials have a general form as a x cube plus b x square plus c x plus d. Now friends, let's understand the terms. Suppose we have a polynomial 3x square plus 3x minus 6. Here, 2 is called as degree and x is the variable as we don't know its value. The numbers in the front of variables are called as coefficients and here 6 will be called as a constant. Now as we have understood what are polynomials, it is equally important for us to know when a specific equation won't be a polynomial. If the equation has negative power or a rational power, then it will not be a polynomial. Also, if some equation has division with variables, then it will also not be a polynomial. Let's jump to the next concept that is zero of a polynomial. The zero of a polynomial is defined as any value of x for which the value of polynomial becomes zero. Now to understand this zero of a polynomial, let's see some example. After solving this polynomial, we get the value of x as minus two. When we substitute minus two in the place of x, we will get the answer as zero. Similarly for three x squared plus three x minus six, for this quadratic equation, we got 1 and minus 2 as the zeros of polynomial. And for the above given equation, we got 3 minus root 2 and plus root 2 as the zeros of polynomials. Now if we look at the first example, we got the value of variable which is x by dividing 6 and 3 which are constant coefficients. From this we can conclude that zero of a polynomial have some relation with constants and coefficients. So we can write it as, now if we have a linear polynomial in the form of ax plus b, the relation will be minus b by a. This is for linear equation, but what about quadratic and cubic equation? As quadratic equation has more than one zeros, what if we add the zeros or multiply it? By adding the zeros of the equation, we will get minus 1. We can write it as minus 1 by 1 and can also write it as minus b by a. Now, if we multiply zeros, we will get minus 2, which can also be written as minus 2 by 1, which is in the form of c by a. Similarly, for the cubic equation, we have more than one zeros, so we will add the zeros, we will get 3 that is 3 by 1 which is of the form minus b by a and if we multiply zeros we will get minus 6 that is minus 6 by 1 which we can write in the form of minus d by a. Friends please remember product of zeros for quadratic and cubic are ratio of coefficient of the last term to the first term as cubic equations have more than one zero so there will be one more relation that is sum of products of zeros. So here for this example we can write it as and we will get an answer as minus 2 by 1. So friends 
these were the relation of zeros with the coefficients keep in mind that a number of zeros are dependent upon the degree of a polynomial such as linear polynomial will have only one zero a quadratic polynomial has two zeros and the cubic polynomial has maximum three zeros friends there will be questions in the exams asking to find the zeros of polynomials or we may have been given one zero already and have to find the remaining zeros now as we have found the zero of polynomial algebraically we can also find it geometrically with the help of a graph which is also called as geometric meaning of zeros of polynomials now how can we find zeros of polynomials by drawing a graph let's take the earlier linear equation which is 3x plus 6 how can we draw this on a graph we know the value of polynomial depends on its variables so when we put in the value of x we will get the value of this equation let's call it as p of x let's take x is equal to 1 and we will get 9 if we take x is equal to minus 1 we will get 3 and let's take x is equal to minus 3 and we will get the value as minus 3 if we draw these points on a graph and join them we will get a straight line and as we know zero of a polynomial is nothing but the value of the variable when the entire polynomial is equal to zero so the zero of a polynomial is at any point on x axis where y is zero as we can see in this example our straight line is touching the x axis at minus 2 where y is equal to 0 so ultimately minus 2 is the zero of this polynomial similarly when we put values of x and draw them on graph for quadratic and cubic equation we will get these graphs now if you observe the graphs we got two zeros of quadratic equation and three zeros of cubic equation the graph of linear equation is a straight line and the graph of quadratic equation is parabola. If a is greater than 0 then it open upwards like u and if a is smaller than 0 then it will open downwards like this. Whereas the graph of a cubic equation is a sigmoidal shape. Now friends we have learned about the types of polynomials, the zeros of polynomials and relation between zeros and coefficients of polynomials. Also, we have learned the graphical representation of zeros of polynomials. Now, let's see the division algorithm of polynomials. Friends, division of polynomial is same as division algorithm of numbers. Only difference is we have variables in polynomials. So, here we can say that if p of x and g of x are any two polynomials with g of x not being equal to zero, then we can find polynomials qx and rx such that p of x will be equal to g of x multiplied by q of x plus r of x also there are some things to keep in mind while dividing the polynomials first you have to arrange the terms of the dividend and the divisor in decreasing order of their degrees we stop the division process when either the remainder is zero or its degree is lesser than the degree of divisor now friends Remember, we will take polynomials of greater degree as dividend and smaller degree as divisor. Where r of x is equal to 0 or degree of r of x is lesser than the degree of g of x. This is known as division algorithm of polynomials. Let's take one example of division algorithm and try to solve it. Here we have divisor x plus 2 and dividend 3x square plus 4x minus 2. Now our first term is 3x square. We will multiply divisor with 3x. We will get 3x squared plus 6. Now we will subtract 3x squared plus 6 from dividend. The signs will change and we will get minus 2x minus 2. By solving further, we will get the solution of this polynomial. Now friends, we can see here that we have taken one example of a solved division algorithm for polynomials. Now how can you verify this? You can verify this by using division algorithm whether we have done this correct or not so we know that dividend is equal to divisor multiplied by quotient plus remainder and we can see here that we have got our dividend only this shows that our answer is correct so friends here we have finished the revision of the entire polynomials chapter friends i hope this session was useful and that's it for today's session i hope you have liked this video share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe our channel also, 
Don't forget to hit the bell icon and never miss another update from Let's Dude. Till then, keep watching, keep learning. Thank you.